Hi, and welcome to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Sunbury United Methodist Church in Sunbury, Ohio. If you're still learning about us, we would encourage you to stick around for some more information about who we are and what we do at the end of today's message. But for now, let's hop right into today's teaching. This morning, I have the pleasure of giving a scripture reading. This comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 14 from the NIV version. And it says this. Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of his disciples dared to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you all please uh, uh, join me in welcoming our special guest this morning, Reverend Steve Court from the East Ohio Conference, filling in for Pastor Gordon this morning. Well, I rejoice in being here today. I want to thank Reverend Myers for inviting me to preach here today. He sends his regards. I also bring you greetings on behalf of Bishop Tracy Malone, who comes here. I work alongside Bishop Malone as part of the extended cabinet of the conference staff. I am uh, Steve Cord. I'm the director of Connectional Ministries in the East Ohio Conference. I'm part of your covenant community in Connectional Ministry, among over 700 churches in East Ohio, who work with 30 to 40 boards and agencies and uh, resources all around the world, actually, to do whatever is needed and helpful for every local church to thrive in making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How's that for a job title? Pretty good, right? So I'm going to ask a couple questions today as we begin and talk about the passage that we just read because it's an important setting near the end of the Gospel of John. And what I want us to remember is in every one of the Gospels as we're reading them in the Bible, we're actually reading kind of a lesson plan or a curriculum on how to know Jesus, how to grow in Jesus, and how to be more like Jesus in everything we do. I'm going to say how to know Jesus how to grow in Jesus, and how to be more like Jesus in everything we do. How many of you have uh, children or grandchildren going back to school now, about now, right? A couple of you? Oh, there's a good crew here. Aren't you fun? And this is an exciting time of year because school's starting and there's new things. But as school starts on this Labor Day weekend, kind of around this time of year, there's a little bit of nervousness too, isn't there? Like we wonder what's going to be expected from us or what we're going to need to do. Labor Day weekend also marks the important time of year when we remember to honor and to respect all the workers in our life who work behind the scenes, right? And so as I was thinking about Labor Day weekend this morning, I wanted to think about the labor of being a disciple of Jesus. Labor means work. Can you say that word, work? Yeah, it's hard work. It's not just fun. So as we think about laboring and working to be a disciple of Jesus, we need to ask ourselves what it means to be a disciple. Well, disciple means student. 
It means one who has an understudy. I actually like to use the word apprentice when I use the word. And I use the word apprentice because we use apprentice in the trades. Are any of you plumbers or electricians or carpenters? No? Okay. Well, we'll work on that. Maybe some of you are nursing students or nurses or medical practitioners. And what I'd like to say is, if I went to visit a doctor or if I went to hire an electrician and somebody told me, I've read the book, I know what to do, would you let that doctor do surgery on you? No? I want somebody who's practiced a little bit, right? So I always like to say that being a disciple is a little bit more like being a plumber than it is by being just a scholar, right? Now, what makes a plumber different is that in order to really become a plumber, you have to get your hands dirty. You have to get involved in the messiness of the profession. So as we come here today on Labor Day weekend, as we think about being a student of Jesus, what I want us to think about is learning how to, to imitate the way that Jesus acts and responds when he encounters situations. Now, as I come today, I'm also mindful because part of my role in Connectional Ministries is being part of a worldwide network of people who help the church respond in times of crisis. It's called the United Methodist Committee on Relief Disaster Response. Have you heard about them? I know this church had talked about helping to support some flooding that was in Ohio that was a challenge a couple weeks ago, and I was involved in all of those responses. As a matter of fact, whenever there's a disaster in Ohio, I'm probably there, not causing it, just there. <laughs> You see, part of who we are is that we are people who prepare for situations we hope will never happen. Now, as Hurricane Dorian approaches the coast and has moved across above Puerto Rico, we recognize that Puerto Rico already responded differently in this disaster than they did the last time a hurricane came through. Because in every situation we face, Sometimes we're just asked to do something that might be bigger than we expected. I noticed that some of you might be parents. You know we can read a good book on parenting, but when we have children, it's somehow different than the book. Is that fair? They're very quiet right now. <laughs> like, nobody can prepare you for what it takes. And we can tell you as students what it's like to go to the next class. We can give you a lesson plan. And as Christians, we can read our Bible. But when we do this, what we recognize is that sometimes things don't go the way we thought they were going to go. Now, in the story today, as we read the story about Simon Peter and meeting Jesus, you remember that Simon Peter has come back to the Sea of Galilee. And this is important because he went back and he and the disciples were together. And it begins by saying, let's go. Well, one of you listened. Let's try this again. Let's go. Okay, good. How many of you like to fish? I like to fish. Well, here's the deal. They caught how many? A bunch, 153 it says, right? And I don't know about you, but I have never been fishing when I caught 153 fish. Have you? Because to do that, you have to use a net. So I want to suggest today in my reading of this passage that fishing wasn't a hobby. It was a job. It was a labor a labor of love. And indeed, it was the thing that these disciples were doing before Jesus called them to ministry. When I talk about living as a covenant community, our theme today, what I want to talk about is what it means to be part of the people who are workers for God. And as workers for God, we're challenged in a covenant community to serve the world by living and acting like Jesus. And that job is a bigger job than we know how to do. 
As a matter of fact, Simon Peter was called Peter because he was the rock upon which his profession of faith, upon which the church would be built, right? So let's talk about somebody who messed up big time. I want you to hear this, because sometimes you're going to mess up. And you're not going to mess up because you're bad. And you're not going to mess up because you're stupid. You're going to mess up because you are so gifted by God. You are so smart that you're going to try to do something that's hard. But a hurricane's going to come along, or a problem's going to come your way, and it's going to be bigger than you thought. And when that happens, we have to learn something. So as we think about Simon Peter, we recognize that when Jesus had been with them, he had been with them, and he had a meal together that we celebrate as communion, and the meal we call as the Last Supper. But it really was a holy meal that was celebrated almost every year in, in Jewish tradition, a Seder. And in that meal, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and he said, break this and remember me. And he took a cup, and he held the cup up, and he gave thanksgiving, and he said, this is a new covenant. A covenant is a special relationship in which God calls people into community to be the people God needs in the world. But maybe not that God needs, it's just the people that God uses. So as I think about this story today, what I recognize is that Simon Peter, I'd like to share with you, prior to Jesus being arrested and sent to the cross, was one of the people who messed up. Because when somebody came up and said, do you know Jesus? He said, no. Matter of fact, a second time somebody said, do you know Jesus? And he said, no. And the third time somebody says, I recognize you. I'm sure you're one of them. And he said, I don't know him. And then right after that, Jesus was arrested. And then he was killed. Now imagine how Simon Peter felt. The Roman soldiers were after him. The religious leaders were after him. People were going to get killed. The hurricane had come. And he had promised that he would follow Jesus all his life. Now, we celebrate baptism. In our baptism, we dedicate this child, we give this child, we promise for ourselves and in confirmation that we will follow Jesus all our life. And that is where we create what I call the covenant community. But when we agree to that, we've agreed to something that's bigger than we know how to do. And so here we go. After Jesus was raised from the dead and he comes back, he goes over to Galilee. And these guys are out fishing. They've gone back to their profession. They've gone back to their old job. They've given up. And in that process, they've lost hope and things weren't working. You ever have a time when things just aren't working? Teachers, you have a lesson plan and the class is not working, right? Other stuff happens. And my question is, what does Jesus do when he sees us struggling? So on the shore, he calls out and he says, hey, how's the fishing? And they said, wake up, folks, not so good, no fish. It's not working. Jesus asked you today, how's it going? For some people, you know, maybe their career isn't where they want it to be. For some people, maybe they didn't get accepted in the school they want. For some people, maybe there's a medical problem in front of us and we have to face a challenge we're not ready for, right? And in the process, the question is, how's it working? Well, on the shore, Jesus is there, 
And he calls out and he says, hey, try this other way. And they do, and they catch more fish than they could possibly imagine, and they haul it in, more than 153. That means they're working hard, right? And they've got some success. And as they come to shore, and he offers them that opportunity, they find him there with a fire, and on top of the fire was a a fish. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Read carefully. Did he have the fish before or after they hauled in their nets? You're getting good. You're listening carefully. So, prevenient grace means before we do anything to serve God, God has already prepared the place for us. In celebrating Holy Communion, what I recognize is anamnesis, a fancy Greek word, and it means to relive and re-experience something from the past. For those of us who have been through huge trauma, it might be that the sound of a siren reminds us of a traumatic past. But in a positive sense, it might be that uh, something smells or causes us to remember how much we're loved. Holy Communion is a moment in which when we take that bread and we dip it in that cup and we receive communion, we relive with Peter that moment on the shore when Jesus gave him a new start and a new chance even after he messed up. And we know this as you read on in the Gospel passage because later on in the Gospel passage, it goes on and it says... When they had finished eating this bread and fish, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon Peter said, just like if your mother or your father said, do you love me? He said, yes, you know I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my lambs, my little ones. And then again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? And he said, yes, "Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And then the third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me now? You know what? You got to read the next part with attitude. And you got to roll your eyes. Now, I know you kids know how to do this. Because he says, Lord, you know that I love you. Right? Like, I'm tired of asking me. Why are you asking me? And I'd like to suggest he asked him three times. Now, what did we just talk about that happened three times? He denied him three times. Three times Jesus came back to him, and by the grace of God expressed in Jesus Christ, there were so many other things Jesus could have said. If it were my brothers and sisters, they'd have said, where were you? Why weren't you there when I needed you? What's wrong with you? Right? If it were me haunting in my own voice, I would have gone away and said, I'm such a mess, God will never use me again. There are all the negative voices, but what Jesus' voice said is, Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Then let me tell you, I've got a job for you. And your job is to... Feed my sheep. Living in a covenant community is, means that we are called by God through our baptism, through our confession of faith, and if you've never received Jesus Christ in your life before, through that act of receiving Jesus Christ, we are called to be part of God's co-workers in the community of faith. We are called to be volunteer responders in the hurricanes of life. 
We are called to be the church which tells the world how to live like Jesus Christ. Anamnesis is also the, the term that medical professionals can use when they ask for your entire medical history. And they want to know your health and well-being so they can heal you. I mean, they want to know everything about you. And the opposite is anamnesia, which is to forget who you are and whose you are. Well, today, Christ our Lord invites this covenant community and all who are watching to repent of their sin, to acknowledge that we've messed up, and to come to the shore with Jesus and to receive a little bread and a little juice. And in that, to remember, to remember that God's grace is greater than our sin. God's love is more powerful than your failing. You are a forgiven people. In the new covenant that Jesus says he poured out for many, he says, love one another as I have loved you. The job you have this Labor Day weekend is to love one another with the very love of Jesus. And all those people out there that cause us all that grief and struggle to love them too and to recognize we are an imperfect people, but we are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Christ our Lord invites all who love him and earnestly repent of their sin. Everybody, you don't have to be baptized. If you want to be baptized, talk to us. You don't have to have ever come to this church before. And you don't have to be perfect. On Facebook, I read not long ago, the world says God will love you when you do the right things. But Jesus says God's love for you is greater than the things you do. Come today. Receive the blood and body of Christ. And know that he's already given his life for you so that you can give your life for others. Thanks for listening to this sermon audio. Our church is located in Sunbury, Ohio, just northeast of the greater Columbus metro area. We've often been called the church at the crossroads due to our location at the corner of state routes 3 and 37 in the heart of our community. If you're ever able to come visit us, you will find that we're passionate about loving God and serving all people. We would love for you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at SunburyUMC. You can also visit our website at sunburyumc.org. We hope you'll tune back in for more of our teachings, and if you're ever in town, we'd love to see you.